or the transformation of earth into human flesh. And the process of nutrition is what really connects us to the earth. I'll come back to that later. And health is a condition that largely has to do with how we're connected to the earth or conversely, how we're not connected to the earth or how efficiently we can transform the products of the earth. That would be like food, plants, nuts and seeds, vegetables and fruits, how efficiently we can transform those things that come from the earth into human flesh. And the question then is where do our connections come from? And well, we go full circle here because they come from the earth. Looking at it from a distance. I wish I had Bette Midler here. She could break into that song and give me an accompaniment for this. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. You see, the only, you come out of the earth, I'm not trying to play rabbi here, but you come out of the earth, and the only thing that keeps you above the earth and not back in the ground is your ability to transform air, water, food, and thought into human flesh. Because as soon as you're no longer able to do that efficiently, then you go back to the earth again. Don't you? So the more, I'm trying to stay on this side of the ground for a little while longer. So we're, we're trying to transform air, water, food, and thought into human flesh efficiently so we can stay healthy. And to the extent that we're not, then we're not so healthy anymore. And conversely, disease is a process that represents being disconnected from the earth and its resources. I'm gonna take just a break to let the guys clean the screen just for a moment here. I love those guys. They go everywhere with me. They're always there to help me. Thanks, guys. Now, I'm going to take this a step farther. The fastest growing diseases that we see in practice, and my practice focuses almost exclusively on autoimmune, GI, allergic type problems, chronic diseases. The most frequent ones we see now are those that are of an autoimmune, allergic, rheumatoid, asthmatic, diabetes, and GI issues, which in turn are generally accompanied by fatigue and depression and disability. Now here's an interesting thing. Asthma and autoimmune issues have, there it is, they've tripled in our country in the past 20 years. Autoimmune diseases, which is about 120 different problems medically. Asthma and autoimmune issues have tripled in the past 20 years. 20 years! That's, I mean, for me, that's a blink of an eye. 20 years ago. What? That's not very long. And diabetes now, which is also, in most cases, considered autoimmune, now afflicts about a quarter of the adult population in this country. And so the, the question is, you know, why is that? Well, one thing we know is there, hadn't, there hasn't been any genetic changes in the last two decades. It's not like we've suddenly evolved into some different type of animal over the past 20 years. Evolution just doesn't happen that quickly. And my thesis is that these diseases represent being disconnected from the planet and our ability to transform air, water, food, and thought into healthy human flesh. So the question is, are we connected from the earth? This person has their hands actually in the ground. You know, I suggested to my class, they're saying, yeah, but Dr. Goldberg, you're talking about eating fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and all these healthy things. But you know, all this stuff is GMO anyway. I said, well, you know, you're right. A lot of it's genetically modified. I said, so one suggestion is that you try raising some of your own food, have a little garden. Mr. Tenor over there, it's Dave Tenor, he's one of my students. He's also interning in our clinic right now. Dave is the, the president of the Vita Hygieia Club at Live Chiropractic College, a hygiene club that we have there. And Dave lives in a little townhouse. He's got an area in front of his townhouse about twice the size of this table. He's planted stuff there. He's got a whole big garden of stuff. It's enough to feed half the neighborhood coming from not more than about an area about 10 feet square. I said, yes, I said to the class, I said, yes, go out and raise some of your own food. They're going, raise our own food. I said, isn't that a novel idea? 
It's so strange to people to think about actually putting their hands in the earth and raising some of their own food. You know, that was one of the great things about the Shangri-La. They actually had gardens there. We had organic gardens at that place. We had organic citrus trees, and we had organic gardens. We got some of our vegetables out of it. So rather than, you know, being connected with the earth, it seems to me that people are starting to find more and more ways to disconnect ourselves from it. We've kind of lost our, our connections from the earth on a panoramic way, looking at these things from a distance. We've lost our connections to the earth. And man has removed himself from his roots to the earth, and he's placed himself into a jungle of concrete and plastic. And he's removed this, this really this umbilical cord that we had with the plant for all these eons. And some don't really connect with the earth again until they die. Yeah, that's their, real, their first real connection with the earth until they die. One of the things I mentioned we have seen, we tripled, you know, just the past couple decades is autoimmune disorders. And uh, they're a consequence of impaired immune functioning. This is from the National Institute of Health. Resulting from the interactions of genetic, yes, and environmental factors. And what are those environmental factors? Autoimmune diseases, a quarter million people, new people are diagnosed with autoimmune disease every year and the incidence is increasing according to the Center for Disease Control. And what is an immune dysfunction? It's a problem that somebody has in their relationship to the outside world. Okay, that's what we call allergy. If you have a problem with something in the outer world, that's you having a problem with something that's not you, we call that an allergy. And if you have an autoimmune disorder, quote unquote, then you have a problem with your internal world. You're reacting adversely to something inside your body. And that's by definition. We have this allergy epidemic where we have recent studies put the rise in allergic disorders at approximately threefold in the last 20 years with the U.S. and the United Kingdom leading the pack. And we have increased severity. It's not just that we have more allergies, but the nature of allergic diseases has increased. There's a number of severe and potentially life-threatening allergic disorders is now very, very common. But not the minor hay fever and stuff I had as a kid. You know, we have kids that are, you know, I talk to school nurses, and they tell me, you know, that they have to watch out for sometimes as much as a quarter of the class. These kids have to take medication. They're reacting against the very earth, the very substance that they came out of. And so they're a lot more complex. You know, have kids now just have one disorder, they have a number of them. They have uh, rhinitis and eczema and asthma and all kinds of food allergies. Things that were formerly pretty rare are now becoming pretty common. So in the United States and in England, we have these autoimmune disorders, which include rheumatoid disorders, like I had rheumatoid arthritis. And allergies are also increasing, and the question is, is there a coincidence that allergies are increasing and all these autoimmune diseases are increasing? And I say, no. I say, I don't think there's a coincidence. And there's a fellow that happens to agree with me on it, a guy a lot brighter than what I am, but I do share in common, and we're both epidemiologists by training, named Dr. David Strachan, who's from the United Kingdom, from the... Um, He's a, he's a clinical epidemiologist over in England at the university there at the London School of, Met of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And how many of you have heard about the hygiene hypothesis? Only Dr. Esser. Okay, well that's good because I'm going to tell you about it now. The hygiene hypothesis explains the increase in all these immune-related problems that we're having. And Dr. Strachan first started talking about this in the mid to late 80s, actually. And I believe this, we can say it comes from our disconnection from the planet, from the Earth. And it comes from an overly hygienic lifestyle. Now, not natural hygiene the way we think. See, we didn't say ever said hygienic per se. We said a natural hygienic. Hygienists have always touted having a connection to the Earth and everything that we've advocated. But for other people's minds, we talk about hygienic, which is you know, one of the reasons that the name was changed for the organization. 
they're thinking about cleanliness, anything from indoor plumbing all the way up to antibiotics and vaccinations. And because of this high level of cleanliness and this fear of bacteria and other microorganisms, we have vaccinated our kids and we use an antibiotics and we've protected our kids. You know, I went to the bank the other day to uh, uh, make a deposit and they have hand sanitizers at the bank. I'm like, what, what do you need a hand sanitizer? I'm asking to tell, what do you need a hand sanitizer? What, so you can clean your hands, they have to touch the money. I said, I get a lot, my hands get a lot dirtier than just touching money, believe me. And besides, my money doesn't need to be laundered. I, I didn't really get it. You know. But it's left many with all these antibiotics and all these you know, Mr. Clean and disinfectants and Lysol spray. You've got to dip the kid in Clorox when he gets up and when he goes to bed at night. <laughs> 